This week on Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I talk about the Windy City Smokeout, Pitchfork, and checking out some Two Fool Cider in Naperville. All that and more on this week's episode. Cause you know, it's gonna cork pop out, boop, and it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I, I, how's, that, how's that beer? It's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You never go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw! Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. Mm-hmm. We're fresh <laughs> off some pitchfork, some cider, mm-hmm. some coffee talk. Coffee talk. <laughs> coffee talk was fun, man. Yeah, that was good. Chicago Coffee Pass, man. Uh, episode one. <laughs> so if you uh, missed that, that was on our YouTube page. We put up a little extra video of us sampling some uh, dark matter coffee. Yeah, we had two of them. The uh, Citra Hop one, and then there was another one. The Saison Fermented. Saison Fermented yeah. one. Right on. Uh, so that, that was tasty. Yeah. There should be a link yeah, on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff if you're looking for it. Mm-hmm. But that was last week. This is this week, and we're not even drinking beer or coffee. No. We're drinking cider. We've got, um. this is a spot that Brad found out in uh, out in the West Burbs, man. This is two full cider. Yeah, I even got the hat yeah, rolling. Yeah, Brad's, Brad's rocking the gear. Brad is on board, man. Um, applesauce is this one. A seasonal hard cider, 10%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are in, this kind of blends into what I did this weekend, <laughs> but to talk about them a little bit, yeah. uh, they are in... Uh, the same parking lot that Salamos is in. Are they affiliated? You know? No, okay. they kind of made it sound like Salamos doesn't really like them. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know if that's true or not. I mm-hmm. think maybe they're trying to create some drama there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this uh, this does not drink like it's 10%. No, um, this will get you in trouble quick, man. And then, um, you know, when you get up on it, and even that first sip, it does it does taste like uh, like applesauce just a mm-hmm. tad. But then I love how like it drops off almost immediately and kind of fades away into this dry, crisp cider. Mm-hmm. Like you expect it to be sweet, but the sweetness just lingers for a bit, and then bam, it's gone. Yeah, especially with such a high ABV cider, you always think like, oh, it's just gonna be sweet and sticky and bleh. but yeah. Because that's not where you want to be. You don't want a headache. You don't want a bunch of sugar. Yeah. You know. Even just, though you got you got to have a lot of sugar in this for 10%. Like, there's yeah. no... There's no way around it. There's no way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're going to sip on this cider out of our fancy corridor glasses as we uh, talk about our week. My favorite glasses, by the way. Oh, nice. These are, these are the <laughs> ones. Uh, but yeah, that kind of leads into what I did this week is going over to Two Fools. Very I was, cool. I was out in the suburbs... And I was like, I kind of want to check these people out. I've seen some pictures on Facebook. I picked up uh, one of their four packs of ciders at one point. And yeah, uh, just drove out there and hit them up. I didn't even go to Salamos. Or, or the Naperville Elf Fest. Which or was, the Naperville Elf like, Fest. Same weekend. I was like, I'm like, did he really just only go to the cider place? Only one there. <laughs> that was it. I was out there going to see my dad. So, oh, right yeah. on. Right on. Uh, but they had, I want to say like 12 different ciders on. Man. Like a handful. That seems like a lot, right? And then they offer two cider slushies, like oh. a pina colada kind of one and then a cherry tart slushy. That sounds nice. They were really good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, they had a pineapple um, hopped cider. Yeah, that's what it was. It was like pine hoppital or uh-huh. something like that. Pineapple hop cider. Yeah. So that was really good. Uh, the pineapples weren't overpowering or anything, but it was really nice. Man, the coffee's got hops in it now in 2017. The cider's got hops in it. I know. What's going on? Man. Uh, but yeah, then they were talking about this one, their applesauce that just got bottled and released. And I was like, well, this is perfect excuse to buy a bottle for yeah. Chicago Beer Pass. Yeah, good call. Because we don't have a lot of cider makers locally, right? <laughs> No, there's Ripey Cider. Ripey Cider. Um, I don't know if Beguile's Cider Project, Broken No Cider, is is off the ground or not. No. And when you think cider or apples, you don't think Illinois. You think Michigan. Yeah, you think Michigan. But you don't think Illinois for apples. Like. Yeah, Virtue up yeah. in Michigan, yeah. Mm-hmm. But really nice space. Uh, 
There was a handful of people in there. If you're going there, I would suggest going to Salamoth and Two Fools. Is it, is, so it's literally like the same parking lot? Yeah, it's the same parking lot. You can park right in the middle and walk to one and then go to the other one. That's cool. So kind of where you want to end off. Do you want to start with beer? Or do you want to start with cider? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, was, yeah, I don't know if they have any collaborations or anything planned with Salamoth. They probably should link up and do some things, but... I love this label too, man. The, you know, the cowboy's got his boots off. He's leaning up against a couple uh, barrels of cider or barrels of apples. Yeah, they got his dog. And he's just <laughs> you know, just just taking the load yeah, off. Yeah, and I, lo- I dig their logo too. It, it looks, looks it good. looks good. I could, yeah, that'd be a fun sticker too, because it's like uh, the logo shaped like an apple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right on. It's clever. Uh, but yeah, that's what that's. I think the only drinking thing I made it to this past week, really. Right on. Um, what about you? You were posting on our instagram so you were all over the place I, I got out a little bit man let's see we'll start with the field museum yeah got to catch up with uh john laffler and the crew at uh at the field museum for the third entry in the hop to it series for them okay it's the fourth entry for the uh or it's maybe like the fifth overall for the museum but this is uh their third beer uh tooth and claw is pilsner that was the one before this one and then um there was another one tooth and claw was first tooth and claw was first yeah and then there's and then there's a second entry yeah and then there's this one, uh, Xi Ming. It's spelled King Ming, like with a Q. I think it's pronounced Xi Ming. Okay. Right? It's um, it's a bigger beer than what we're expecting from Off Color. It's like a 9.5% beer. So, I mean, there's there's no real, like, it doesn't really tell, they don't really tell you what's in it. They just kind of say it's inspired by these archaeological digs from, you know, from back in the day. Oh, cool. Um, oh, but yeah, you know, it kind of reminded me of, um, like, a... Uh, like a Vienna lager, you know, like it reminds you of like a darker, you know, malt forward lager that's kind of sweet from the from the malts, right? Like oh, cool. a, it's like it reminds you of that. Um, yeah, this party had like, you know, full on like Asian inspired like cuisine and everything from like sticky buns to like, you know, like, uh, you know, a, like a bowl of noodles with oh, chopsticks, wow. the whole nine. They went all out. Man, that sounds good. It was cool, man. Um, How'd the beer pair with the food? I thought it was great. Nice. I thought it was great. It was just, um, yeah, I was surprised that it was uh, almost like a 10% beer from Off Color. I mean, when, when's the last time they did that? Right. They're you know? usually all about these easy drinking kind of weird styles. But yeah. yeah. Are and we then, like guard 10% beers back? Are they like sneaking up <laughs> on us? Like, oh, yeah, when you weren't looking, we made our beers 10% again. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I found out that uh, Scurry, which is their dark ale, is moving to seasonal production okay. because they want Tooth and Claw to be, it's going to be their national, national release. Oh. And that'll take its place on the year round um, schedule. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I like so that. that's cool. I mean, and good for them because, you know, like they, they started off, well, they're going out of their way to like find their niche with these lesser brewed styles. Like Scurry is a dark honey ale, but it's like a German beer, like called the, uh, the Cot Busser, right? It's kind of like an alt beer, but it's not. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, like we were saying, the Goes is a, a style that they were brewing long before it was in, in vogue. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're following that trend with this, with <laughs> this beer. You know, I'm still not sure what's in it, but it was, it was, it was quite, it was quite okay. tasty. Yeah. So he said only 1,400 bottles are going to be uh, here in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. So there was a company. Um, you could buy bottles there. They're like $16 per. And there was a company in glassware as well. Okay. That, so that they're like large format bottles? Yeah. They're the big like champagne style bottles. Either um, either 750s or 765s. Okay. Something like that. They often do releases at their uh, off-color bottle shop. So they that might have already happened or maybe it's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a good party. That was that was my first stop, man. Uh, cheers to those guys, man. I like I like that they gave us a chance to go to the museum and hang out on an off night. You know yeah. what I mean? Where it's not the only people in there, are pretty much just us, cool. right? Hanging out, you know, having Asian cuisine with uh, Sue right behind us. Yeah, you know, just kind of like checking things out. That's yeah. awesome. I'm trying to tell. Uh, I was trying to tell the museum folks because you know they've got that's the only place where you can get um, you know, the Toppling Goliath. Uh, King, Pseudo Sue. Pseudo Sue and King Sue. The only place on draft you can get it is there. Oh, okay. So, you know, they got that Morning Delight coming out, which is their big, like, barrel aged coffee stout. The the guys from uh, Top Link Goliath. Goliath. So, I'm like, hey, man, you know, why don't you bend their ear and have, like, a little remote party about the size of the party we're at now yeah. here in Chicago so we don't have to go to fucking Decorah, Iowa. That sounds pretty good. You know, I like so the sound of that. We'll see where that goes. Probably gets nowhere, but I, but I put it tried. out. I put you it tried. You tried, man. You, you know? tried. You got to do that. <laughs> 
Yeah. Nice. Uh, so that was over at the Field Museum uh, during the week. And then uh, on the weekend, you made it over to, what, Pitchfork? Yeah, Pitchfork and Windy City Smoke. Oh, okay. Windy City Smoke is a party and a half, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Windy City Smoke, a.k.a. the... Uh, Chicago Rib Fest. Chicago, <laughs> Chicago Rib Fest. <laughs> The uh, the cowgirl boot and uh, and short shorts fest. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's a, it's a fun time, man. Um, Beer Row at this thing has like twenty breweries, right? Nice. They've got like you know like these chandeliers made of rope, you know, and everyone's there to party. It's a good vibe, you know. Cool. It's 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 kind of unique, and it's in the par- basically the parking lot of the Chicago Tribune. It's a space that sits right along the Chicago River. It's kind of a perfect location, and it doesn't really get used for anything else. You know, which I liked. Uh, for some reason, man, I missed the Mexican coffee break. It's an evil twin collab with uh, Westbrook, right? Oh, that's Westbrook is one of those crews on, on the East Coast that does the Goza, yeah. popular Goza. Yeah, um, I missed that. Um, hung out with uh, Jared Rubin. He was the, um, I saw Jared Rubin there and, and Drew Fox from 18th Street. Those are the only two brewmasters I saw there. Okay. Yeah, but Jared was back there, you know, very hands-on, pouring everything, you know. Uh, we talked about, you know, San Francisco is one of his markets now. Uh, he had one of his reps um, selling beer for him in China, I believe. Right. It was either a rep for him or it was one of his distributors yeah. in China. Yeah, so he's making moves, man, with his beer. Um, and I finally got a chance to uh, get down on that chocolate churro uh, oh, yeah. porter, caramelized that's, chocolate ooh, churro that's good, porter. It's good beer. I think that was my go-to pretty much the whole weekend, especially, okay. you know, that and then trying all these pit masters from, you know, St. Louis and Yeah, any Memphis. standouts of uh, meats? Uh, Pappy's. Pappy's in St. Louis is the truth, man. Oh, okay. um, Salt Lick down in Austin, Texas was good. I felt it was a little uninspired. You know, it was like, you know, kind of dry. I'm like, listen, you brought two items, you know. One, better be good. Right? Well, what are we doing here? You know, you, you got you you're trying to get this trying to get this win or not? You know, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. So it, the format was different this year because all the visiting uh, food fooderies were, you know, the the visiting eateries were on one side, and all the locals were on another side. Oh, okay. So you know, your bang bangs and your smokes, you know, mm-hmm. they were on they were on one side. So that was different. Oh, uh, Three Dots and a Dash had a, a booth set up, which was really? interesting. For food or drink? For a drink. Oh. Uh, $12 painkillers. Okay. Yeah. So um, on the spirit side, uh, they say if you went to the brunch, which was like an additional add-on, you could have gotten Whistle Pig whiskey. But for like general public all weekend, it was exclusively uh, Jack Daniels. Oh, wow. I've had trouble with Jack in the past. I stayed away from that. You know, the Bub City guys. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Against the Grain because they are a brewery and a smokehouse, which I I think that I don't remember that. I forget that too. Yeah. But yeah they are. I knew they were a restaurant. Yeah. They're a full on restaurant smokehouse. So they right. had a booth there. That okay. was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, this was a great party, man. I, I enjoyed myself quite a bit. It was three days. I went like maybe two of the days. Oh, so you went twice. Like yeah. You had to, you went the one day and you're like, this is I'm so like, good. I got to come back. I'm like, I got to go back. You know, Bub City had a big presence. Um, yeah, Pappy's was probably my favorite. Man. Oh, and shout out to uh, Sir Kensington, man, because I only know them to be like the ketchup and mayonnaise purveyor. Yeah. Um, you, you know, organic or whatever. Oh, but they had some nice like crab waffle fries. Whoa. Waffle fries with like tons of crab loaded on it. They had like, you know, another seafood option. That sounds, that sounds I good. I thought the food options were like, you know, they kept your attention with all this, you know, barbecue, but then there were a lot of non barbecue options to keep you interested. Okay. You know? Well, yeah, I feel like sometimes you could eat a lot of barbecue, but then sometimes you just need like a quick little in between. Cleanse your palate, right? Yeah, exactly. Some crab fries. You know, get some crab fries, hang out by the river, you know. Man. Summertime, man. Shout out to Summertime Shy, man. We had, uh, who was it? Jimmy Buffett was in town. Fish was in town. Yeah. Uh, uh, Windy City Smoke, Pitchfork. Co-worker uh, here at Loose Keys. He was uh, at the Jimmy Buffett concert. He was at the Jimmy Buffett concert? They, they had an RV. They tailgated it. <laughs> Dude, the Haymarket guys uh, was were telling me that Jimmy Buffett, like, low-key, is, like, one of the best parties they've ever been to because, like, everyone comes in on these, you know, kind of like the Grateful Dead with the RVs and a bunch of – they have enough in their van to, like – <laughs> party with everyone that comes yeah, right yeah you know like their party is in abundance you know so yeah you could just probably you could have went into wrigleyville that weekend and kind of drank for free with yeah just have your hawaiian shirt on and your <laughs> flip-flops and you would have been welcome yeah small bar's 15th anniversary was this weekend all right chicago open air where kiss and you know megadeth and those cats were down there man there was a lot going on this active restaurant. and all i did was go drink some cider <laughs> <sighs> Was, and then Pitchfork. And Pitchfork, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Pitchfork, it seems like Pitchfork is changing their format. So like, I don't know, either I missed it or the the offering for general admission Pitchfork is very limited on the on the beverage side. So like I pretty much you can get the three one twos in your in your um IPA, right? Or you can get the collaboration beers. There were two. Four okay. Cone is always really good. Yeah. And then there's a red ale with uh, Survive. Oh, but then like back in the past, it was like a huge rotating tap list. You had nine or ten Goose Island beers. Yeah. And I didn't see that. Um, I'm guessing because I didn't go to Pitchfork Plus, which was an upgrade, or the VIP, which was a different upgrade. Jeez. Right? So, I mean, it could be me. I could have missed it. But, I mean, I laughed it twice. I didn't Did see it. Did you see uh, Virtue there? Were they pouring it Oh, all? and Virtue was there. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Doers, the Scotch. Yeah. They had a booth as soon as you walked in. Like a really cool display, actually, like this big copper, um, like mini, like what do you call it? Um, you know, the van that you sleep in, you know, like a, like a camp, so they had like a camper. Oh, okay. Like they had like a, a copper camper. And, you know, a whole little experience with, you know, you can take pictures with like roosters and shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm like, this is great. But where's the, you know, I came for the, I came for the 10 to 12. I came beer. for the beer. I don't <laughs> no chicken. You know, I mean, this is cute. Deep Eddie vodka is cute, but come on, where's my um, where's my special releases yeah, every like hour? Sophie and Elise, yeah. You know, something. So I didn't see that. Maybe it was in one of those upgrade options. Okay. So, yeah. All right, but the collaboration beers, not too bad, huh? Yeah, Four Cone is always a, a proper option at that party. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, yeah. So I went there, and then I went to uh. The newest bar at Wrigley Field, uh, Lucky Door. Okay. Yeah. So Lucky Door is a project run by Old Urban Brewing, and um, it's a super tiny, maybe like 70-seat space. Um, They got like maybe 15 to 20 taps, all Chicago. Okay. Right. And they're saying like, I think eight of the taps are beers that the Chicago brewers are going to make just for that location. And initially, I thought it was a brewery when I first heard about the project, but it's not. It's, um, It's a... A tap room focused on the craft beer experience, okay. right? So um, you you might it's you know they Wrigley's got this new plaza that sits ba- literally like steps from Wrigley, right? So there's um there's two bars there and then there's this bar that sits right on the side. So Lucky Door apparently is a groundskeeper that worked there for like thirty years. He lived in a house across the street from Wrigley Field, so the the place <laughs> is named after him. That's pretty awesome, right? Yeah, How like, cool is that? Yeah, you know. Yeah, and I'm like, um, we went on an off day, so the Cubbies, I think it was all star, all star game, so it, it it gives you a chance to go experience Wrigleyville, you know, without the chaos, mm-hmm. and then it's like a proper little craft beer island, like right there. I loved it; it was great. Um, I had something from um, from uh, we've had them on the show, Maplewood. Maplewood. Maplewood had a, a beer called uh, Woke Berries. Okay. It was like a, it was a golden ale with like vanilla. And raspberries and coffee. Bizarre. <laughs> Bizarre on paper. But I, I almost mean, picked up some Maplewood cans. Yeah. And it all kind of worked out, man. I was excited about that place. Um, I saw the Cicerone guys, or the ladies from Cicerone. They were there. The uh, the Dovetail crew, they were there. My fa- the keg cocktails from Billy Sunday. Yeah. Uh, my favorite part is the is the draft board. So when you know how when you go to an airport, or the old school um, draft yeah. board, where... The, yeah. the letters would spin really fast to show the next destination and, yeah. the, and the time or whatever. And that's how their draft board is. Is it uh, TV displays, though? No. It, oh. I, I think it's the real thing. Oh, really? Maybe, uh, you know. Because I, like, no, uh... I left here and went there, so I was probably a little, you know, I was leaning a little bit. So maybe it was just digital. Cause it I didn't know, look digital, though. But I know, like, Tap Lister and all those had different styles for their beer boards. Yeah. So... It might have been TVs, might but have, maybe not. Might have been TVs. It is really cool, though. Nice. That's, that's, that's a good, like, center focus piece for uh-huh. that space. Dope space. Yeah. Man, that's pretty cool. Anything else you make it to? Or that sounds like, how'd you have time for anything else? Dude. <laughs> I, was, I was struggling the rest of the week, okay. man, but. You know, it was fun to get out. You know, I think, you know, like, I feel like it's the, you know, the height of the summer and all this stuff going on, the energy of everything happening all at once kind of reminded, just took my mind off of everything. And we retreated it like we used to do in the old days when we were young. Like, hey, we're just going to go to every single thing <laughs> for the next, <laughs> you know, 72 hours. Yeah. All the things. So, you get lost in it. It was fun. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Whew. Whew. Yeah, before we jump into this week, I remembered um, last week we were drinking the War Picks. Yeah, uh, the from, Floyds, McKellar. Yeah, yeah. They um, sent us a message on Twitter. Really? And said we were correct. Mm-hmm. Some of it is brewed at Grand Central. 
So some is brewed in uh, Wisconsin, uh-huh. like I said, in the can, and some is brewed in uh, Grand Central. So Check that out. So that's good to know. And then I was running by Grand Central recently, and I could see all the tables in there, and it looks like they're about ready to open. I didn't know they were going to have like a proper tap room and everything. Yeah, um, yeah I've never been. Well, yeah, I don't think it's open yet. No. Oh. So, of course, you haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just thought I'd mention that. Just uh, that's cool. We were right. You know, feel good about that. Yeah, I'll, dr- I'll drink to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then, coming up this weekend, I don't know if it's as crazy as last weekend with all those uh, festivals and events happening. No, it's a little um, a little slower this week. Uh, we'll start with the July twentieth, which um, I believe is a Thursday. Uh-huh. Um, let's see. It is at a uh, Links Tap Room, a place where we've recorded the show before. Yeah. And Worker Park, um, Bells, not Bells, Great Lakes. Great Lakes is um, they're having a uh, Christmas in July party where they're going to serve uh, bourbon barrel aged Christmas sale. I didn't even know they had a bourbon barrel aged version of the Christmas sale. Ooh, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that. I don't think their standard Christmas sale is barrel aged. No. But. Yeah, Christmas in July at Lynx on uh, July 20th. Okay. Yeah, so that ought to be cool. Nice. Um, the big party this weekend is probably on Sunday, the 23rd, um, noon at um, at Two Men's Tap. They're uh, Pipeworks. Pipeworks uh, has an event called Total Eclipse of the Stout, where they're uh, doing a tap takeover, primarily stouts at that location. Okay. So you can get $18 flights. There'll be uh, carnita tacos for 3 bucks. Yeah, cherry ab- abduction, you know, cinnamon, smoke break. You know, they're taking over every tap line there. Oh, cool. Yeah, so stouts in the middle of the summer, right on. Nice. And then also uh, Sunday, July 23rd is the Belgian Beer Cruise. Nice. Uh, this Kurt, is, um... Kurt Foreman event. There and so I think this is the third and final cruise yeah. of the season. So there, I mean, there might still be tickets available, but that's from twelve thirty to three thirty. Go out on the Pacific Blue, mm-hmm. go drink some uh, Belgian beers at sea, or really, yeah, <laughs> on the lake, <laughs> not or, really or, at or, sea, or on the lake. Know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, shout out to Headquarters Beer Arcade. On the same day, they're having a Three Floyds uh, Rick and Morty beer brunch. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they're going to have uh, six Three Floyds beers, uh, noon to three. That's a brunch at the Beer Arcade. So does the Beer Arcade have a kitchen? Like, do they have food at the Beer Arcade? I don't remember. I, we've been to that thing because that's where they do the uh, Firkin Fest. Yeah. I don't remember eating there, though. At Headquarters? Yeah. Yes, they do. Okay. Not at that Headquarters. That Headquarters is gone. Oh, so this, this the one is the in one the one in River North. North, yeah. Okay, they do have a kitchen there. So. Cool, that's a thirty-seven dollar ticket for that. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, is that is that all for the events? I think so, man. Whoa. Okay, not too bad. Yeah. Uh, and then before we wrap up here, a little bit of beer news, as we always do. I think we talked for a long time on some beer news last week. But what do we got, what do we got this week? Yeah, we did. Um, nice little story in Forbes about uh, New Belgium. You know, New Belgium, they picked a new CEO. They picked up um, son Tory Jim Beam's old CEO. Oh. Yeah, and there's a story in Forbes about how, you know, basically how New Belgium's trying to still find itself because they're too big to be small but then they're not really big enough to be considered big so they're struggling with an identity crisis okay kind of like how sam adams does in some states yeah. you know yeah um the the takeaways i got from this were that uh the sam adams apparently is making 879 million dollars annually okay that's not too <laughs> yeah. shabby uh new belgium uh, according to the story is about 200 um Thirty-four million dollars annually. Man, I yeah, feel right. like I see New Belgian beer more than I see uh, a Sam Adams beer. Yeah, that could just be our market. Maybe Sam Adams has to be crushing it in like the New England yeah, area, right? In a, like in the East Coast, Northeast. Yeah, gotta be, right? But here it's kind of like, nah. Yeah, nobody's really checking for Sam. Yeah, it was interesting. The story was about uh, you know, Kim Jordan, who was the uh, she was the president and she left, and it was talking about her net worth compared to. Um, it's a fraction of Ken Grossman from uh, Sierra Nevada's uh, net worth, even though they're they're not really they're basically producing the same amount of beer and making the same amount of revenue. But the New Belgium model is a little bit different. Right, so it they're was company owned. Company owned, and then you know Ken is a hundred percent owner, and how you know um, yeah how the how Kim from New Belgium like they're paying for your they'll give you a cruise 
to uh, they give you a cruiser, the bike, you know, a bicycle after a year, and then they'll send you to Belgium after five years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was kind of a testament to like their model versus other models that work. And it was just kind of like a spotlight on her. It was an, cool. it was an interesting story. Yeah. So um, that's Forbes. I guess we'll, we should include a link in the description here to check that out. Yeah, for sure. Oh, um, shout out to the walk in. It's a uh, slashy on Milwaukee Avenue. Um, right at right at the Blue Line, Milwaukee. So right before you hit Diversity and Milwaukee. Mm, okay. So there's a liquor store called um, the Red Star Liquor, that's been there for since 1991. And the owner of that place owns like you know the two restaurants across the street. And now he he bought this space next door, and now he has a slashy. Oh, cool. Right. So there's a there's a new cocktail program there, and now every Tuesday they're doing um they're called Brewer Tuesdays. So the first one is going to be with uh with uh, Metropolitan Brewing. So uh, Tracy Hurst, yeah. the, uh, the co-founder over there, is going to come out. And they got this special where if you buy the beer from the Slashy, they'll give you a pint glass and then buy your first beer at tap, on tap next door. Oh, yeah. that's pretty awesome. So I would say check this place out, man. Um, I went there and had a, a good time. <laughs> nice. Had myself a good old time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's a Chicago focus on the draft list, about eight drafts. Um, but the cocktail program is where it's at. You should check it out. Yeah. Okay. Do um, it. Half Acre, uh, their big North party is going to be at their new facility. Oh, nice. The one that we recorded at last summer. Yeah, we shot there with, uh, uh, not Matt. <laughs> uh, Gabe. Gabe. Yeah. Gabe. Uh, Magliardo. Yeah. The, uh, what is he? He's, he's the owner. Yeah, he's the founder. Owner. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we shot with him. So you probably didn't, couldn't tell. Also, we didn't do video. So oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, because we, right? <laughs> of course you didn't know we were there. Yeah. Uh, it yeah, was we, just the audio format. So, yeah. <laughs> So we sat there. So that's their big party, right? Apparently, the new space is going to be 120 seats, and then you can fit another 100 people in the beer garden. Oh, cool. Yeah, and they're hoping their party, the Big North, is um, August 19th. Yeah. They said they're going to be open um, between now and then. Well, So the, that'll okay. be their second location. All right. We'll be, I'll be there the first week. Yeah. I want to go. I want to go, too. Yeah. Yeah. Light week for news, man. That's it for news. That's it. Well, uh, then I think that does it for uh, this week's episode of Chicago Beer Pass. Nick, where can people find you? Get in touch when we're not recording here. Right on, man. I'm on Twitter, at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter, at BRAD. Chicago Beer Pass is on Twitter, at Chicago Beer Pass. Website, chicagobeerpass.com. All the episodes are posted there. Links to iTunes, Stitcher, the YouTube version as well. Um, if you head over to our Facebook page, you'll see links to other events. You'll see other photos. You'll see maybe a link to that coffee cast, yeah. coffee talk. Coffee talk. And, yeah, so always lots of stuff around on the social media when we're not just doing this podcast. Yeah. So, yeah, hit us up. And we'll be back uh, next week with another episode. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.